This is the Markush extraction view. The Markush editor as a component in another application. As you can see, this part of the application is quite similar, but here you can see the Markush editor and under that the exemplify structure list. The same way as you can drag and drop structures from the document selected structures view to the compound list, the same way you can drag and drop fragments from the document to the Markus editor part. And if you add exemplify structures under this view, these exemplify structures are continuously validated against the Markus structures. That means the structures highlighted by green is matched to the Markus structures, but the structures highlighted by red is not matching. That means some kind of inconsistency of your extracted data. This is a really fast feedback for the curator. The extracted information is right or not. If you select any of these uh, matching structures, we can highlight what is the matching part in the Markush. But if you select the red ones, we can, can't say anything currently. That's what, has, what I was mentioned in my previous uh, presentation. We want to implement a non-hit highlighting functionality, which can help in these cases and shows you what is the problematic part of your Markush. Why is not matching to the structures? The, this can save a lot of time for the curator because it's really hard to find some cases in complicated Markus structure. What is the mistake in the, your drawing? I have a short demo about the basic usage of this tool. You can import document from many sources. I use here a simple import from Google Patents. We have an integrated version. You need only the patent number to do that. The draw structure is not recognized here because I run the annotation without Clyde. But if you have installed Clyde or Osra, the structure is also highlighted. I add an empty Markus structure to this project. And I draw the scaffold. Be careful because I a little bit cheat here. If I remember well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this way, you can very easily draw the structures. And as I mentioned, you can simply drag, select the fragment definitions and drag and drop in the same way. Let's find someone. Obviously, the recognition is not perfect. But Daniel just mentioned me before the presentation is much better now. He can add the attachment points automatically. It's not necessary anymore in some cases. OK. The same way you can drag and drop the exemplified structures, or we have some extraction wizard which can help you to find it automatically, but now I do it manually. I finished it. <laughs> and as you can see, it's validated against the Markus structures. This is the two-way linking between the document and the extracted information. If you select any of these exemplified structures or fragment definition, what is extracted, the document view scrolling automatically to the relevant part of the document. And you can inspect the context of this information. I think it can be really useful to understanding better the content of the document. As I mentioned, we have a compounds view. I opened here the exemplify structures. This navigation function is also available here. And as I mentioned, you can add additional fields. I add a Boolean field here. It's claimed or not in the document. It's a simple checkbox field. You can check it on sometimes. Obviously, this is not a correct uh, curation. And I add a text field containing some free comment related to this document. We hope it's quite intuitive and easy to use tool for this purpose. And as we know, it's absolutely unique on the market. Nobody has similar systems. If we can do this for patterns, we can actually do it for other kinds of documents, not just patterns. So we can do for journal articles and internal reports. Uh, and of course, also the patterns. So it's just one of the cases. So now I want to stress that you can use Chem Curator 
for any kind of document in which you know that there will be some structures that will be present and that you would like to visualize this document, see where the structures are, in which context they appear, and maybe fix OCR errors or select which ones you want to export. So basically do uh, an interactive uh, extraction of, uh, of the structures. So for, for those of you who have been using document to structure, which basically is, uh, is an automated tool, uh, now you have a graphical user interface for, for it, which is uh, much better than anything we had until now because it's really specific for documents. And you can do all these nice things with uh, selecting the structures and also the wizards. Uh, so the wizards are there to, uh, to handle the, the problem of noise. So people told us, oh, it's, it's quite nice what you can find in documents, but there are lots of things which are not relevant for us. Maybe there are all these fragments, metal, ATL, phenyl, uh, hydroxyalkyl. I, I don't want these parts. Some, some people need it, and if you want to build a Marcus, you need it. But in other use cases, you don't need that part. And if you get a list of these, which can be hundreds, it's very, it's very annoying. Uh, so we have a wizard that can uh, filter this. Uh, also, fragments, maybe the solvents are not relevant for you. So a wizard is there to allow you to customize what you want to extract. So this, uh, this tool uh, supports uh, a lot of different formats. So if you have a local file on your, on your uh, hard drive, which is an XML or PDF or HTML, then you can just open it using Chem Creator, file open, you know, the, the usual stuff, and it, it will come up. Chem Creator is a good desktop tool, but the desktop tool alone is not really useful because that we implemented some integration features. If the, through the integration server of Chem Curator, you can share the curated project inside your company with other Chem Curator users. And from the integration database, you can also access to this kind of uh, curated data from other ChemAxon tools. It uses a standard IJC schema, and it's widely supported by ChemAxon applications. Because we use mainly standard file formats, for example, SDS, HTML, XML, the project files is also uh, can be processed by external tools, third-party tools, if you want to use your own applications. We have some plans for further improvements. For example, in the naming side, we want to improve the accuracy, as Daniel mentioned, and we want to add new languages from Chem Curator side we want to improve the processing, we want to implement a preprocessing engine which can, which can generate a raw project for you from bulk downloads. And we also want to implement the non-heat visualization, what I mentioned previously. And we're working on some Markush extraction wizard to speed up the Markush extraction process. Here you can see the UI of the application. This is the, we have two uh, extraction view, one for compounds and uh, other for Markus structures. This is the uh, compounds extraction view. In the middle of the screen, you can see the annotated document. Chemical information is highlighted by gray. Maybe it's not the best color for it. And if you can select on this document, and selected structures appears under that, the selected structures view. You can simply drag and drop the structures from this view to the uh, editor components, in this case, the compound list. Obviously, you can add additional fields to this uh, grid. For example, if you want to add is claimed or not, you can simply do that, or if you want any comment, you can simply add a new field to do that. This project explorer representing the project hierarchy. Every project is representing one curated document, and you can add as many marker structure and as many compound lists to this curated project as you want. 